With both the city's main bus and train stations found here, as well as one of the main lake cruise terminals, it is probable that most visitors to the Swiss city of Lucerne will first step out here into Bahnhofplatz, and one may forgive them for being too distracted by their beautiful lakeside surrounds to notice this rather melancholic collection of tiles beneath their feet. No, nothing to do with Aslan and the Chronicles of Narnia, but of this, the city's Leuven Dankmal. This huge and emotionally moving relief of a dying lion is in honour of the 700 plus Swiss guards who died defending King Louis XVI in 1792 from French revolutionaries. This is not the only impressive piece of rock to tell the story of Lucerne's past. Just metres away is the fascinating but rather bizarre Gleckschergarten, where visitors first step 20 million years back in time and see firsthand the scars and potholes left by a huge glacier that once covered this region. It is remarkable to think that this area, smack in the middle of the Swiss Alps, was once under the sea. It is also remarkable to think that the 19th century curators of this geological find felt the need to add an Arabian night style mirror maze next to it. Bizarrely random, but delightfully fun, I felt I was on the set of the Bond classic The Man with the Golden Gun and expected to bump into Roger Moore or Christopher Lee at any moment. Once visitors have finally found their way out of it, this unique sense of humour that Swiss geologists appear to have to this day carries on around the site. From creepy gnomes placed inside the odd crevice, to the need to paint a hawk on the end of this viewfinder. I'm still trying to work out what the connection, or indeed the joke is, between the Ice Age and these domesticated rabbits found on the grounds. Lucerne is probably best known for its picturesque lake and the fabulous sights and activities available around it. But reaching, say, the local peaks of Mount Borgenstock, Pilatus or Rigi by the unique and historical modes of transport available, it can be expensive. Very expensive. But there is a way to indulge in historical mechanisation to transport one to a lofty height and enjoy panoramic views of the lake without breaking the bank. Granted, its 21st century carriages may not be as charming as the Riggy Barn or the Hamage Van Lift, but the Gouche funicular has been transporting passengers for a few Swiss francs per ride up to the city's famous and recently reopened Hotel Chateau Gouche since 1884. One is not obliged to stay at the hotel to use the funicular, although it is probably polite not to linger too long in the courtyard enjoying the views, if not staying to at least enjoy a drink from the hotel bar. But a part of the city where no obligations are required to enjoy similar breathtaking views, and where one can stay as long as one likes, within opening times of course, is along the top of the well-preserved medieval city walls dating from the 13th century. These historic fortifications include nine stone towers, still intact, and of which three are open to the public, both to explore and capture that panoramic view beyond. But one shouldn't forget the great sites within the city itself, from such distinct historical buildings as the Hofkirche here, to these beautifully painted facades, some dating back centuries and others slightly more recent, that are dotted around the old town telling stories about the city's past tradings, traditions and residents, including this one of the famous German writer Goethe, who apparently once stayed the night here. And then there is the city's iconic Kappelbrucke, this stunning wooden bridge, dating back in parts to the 14th century, is famous for these 17th century painted roof panels, depicting significant events in Swiss history and mythology. Once lining the full 205 metre length of the diagonal bridge, 
Sadly, only 30 of these panels now survive. After a major fire in 1993, nearly destroyed them all and the bridge itself. A little further down the River Royce is another and similar medieval bridge, the Spreierbrucker. Shorter, smaller and slightly older than its sister bridge, the Spreierbrucker is completely original and darker, not just in appearance but also in the subject matter of its painted panels, depicting the dance macabre. Cue the music that postdates these paintings by 200 years. <laughs> 